So this is uh, a Niv Mizzet Reborn deck, and it's based around the idea of Weissman, uh, the deck control. If you don't know what that is, it's a very old design. It basically was meant to all but lock the game down and win through card advantage and very few actual win conditions. Now, Niv Mizzet Reborn is popular for a multitude of reasons. The main one is it's a five-color general, so you can play literally about anything. But also, there is no obvious build. There, you know, it. So let's just read the card. It's a five mana six six flyer, slightly above curve. When Niv Mizzet Reborn enters the battlefield, reveal the top ten cards of your library for each color pair. So it's two, they have to be a two color only. Choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen card into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this can, in theory, draw you up to ten cards. Uh, the, you'll see the way my deck is built. Uh, it usually gets four plus, you know, it, I've never seen it go lower than two. I have seen it go six more often than not. Seven is all but unheard of. Um, and I'm going to go by the color pairs as opposed to the types of cards. I'll, you know, just so we can stare at Niv Mizza for a, a moment longer. The deck has a lot of flexibility because the colors themselves have a lot of flexibility. And it also means that this deck is constantly in flux. It's never stuck. Almost every set in Magic, uh, even the core sets now, are getting uh, multicolor cards in them. So every time a set comes out, you just look at it going, do I want this in this color pairing? Is it a cool card I want to test out? Those sorts of things. So you're going to see a lot of, uh, I guess, overlap between the colors, but let's get into it anyway. So let's get this one out here. We're going to start with red-blue. Now, in almost a sort of tit-for-tat uh, design, there's going to be a good number of counter spells. there's going to be a good number of clone effects, and card advantage cards. So this, for a blue-blue-red, you counter one spell. For one colorless more, and you go down here to the overload, the main thing is this can stop a storm. So if you have any sort of, uh, the, the, where, we, where I play, storm isn't a big problem. But it's just a good card to have. It's a cheap card to buy. Three mana to stop a spell isn't that big of a problem. Roll reversal. Same cost. You can exchange control of two permits that share a type. Uh, this includes swapping lands, uh, swapping creatures. You'll see I have a good number of creatures. I have a fair number of artifacts in here. You can usually get many things. Uh, this deck, this version I have right now, does not run uh, Planeswalkers. Uh, so... There are many that do want to run sort of a Super Friends build. That's not very budget-friendly. Or if it is, they, the synergies are just garbage. So I like this card just for most of being able to switch creatures, and they don't have to be your own. Protean Raider. So it's a 3-mana clone, but you have to attack first. We can get around that. That's fine. Is it Charm? Uh, I wanted to run all 10 Charms. I really did. But some of them just don't work as well as you think. This works because you have a sort of counter spell ability, two damage to a creature. Uh, every now and then you'll use it. If you start seeing decks that have uh, ramp creatures or you know key pieces such as Lab Maniac, that's there to kill Lab Maniac also. But most of the time, it's the draw two, discard two. But remember, can kill Lab Maniac, can stop a spell if they tap out, always important. Fevered Visions. This is a card I've gone back and forth on many times. The big thing here is, yes, you're feeding the table, but unchecked, and oftentimes people don't want to use Pinpoint to take this out, doing two damage, uh, you know, every turn to, to everyone else, that's pretty big. And the fact is that this is going to draw you a card on the same turn you play, because it draws at the end of the turn. And this is a deck that is very much about uh, instant speed responses. So that's blue-red. You're looking at five cards there. Moving on, black-green, my favorite color pair ever. Uh, Under Own Lich, uh, now that they're cheap, 5 mana for 4 3, okay. Uh, if you would draw a card instead, look at the top three cards of your library, then put one of them into your hand and the rest in the library. So, for example, Is It Charm? Is It Charm is going to basically let you look at six cards. I mean, yes, you're still only going to, you're still going to be breaking. Actually, it's going to be technically card loss, but uh, pay for to make them indestructible. I've done that a few times just to keep a guy on the board, you know, when people are trying to sweep or whatever. Uh, this card does do some lifting. It's not the card that's going to break the camel's back, but does some stuff. Putrefy. 
This could be Pernicious Deed. This could be so many pieces. Uh, Assassin's Trophy. This one is just dirt cheap. That's the big thing here. Three mana. The cost, you're looking at like 50 cents. Uh, it blows up an artifactor. Creature can't be regenerated. Those are most of your are typical problems. This almost always finds a target. The one I like a little more better, Casualty of War. Uh, some decks run Decimate. This doesn't have the caveat where you need to have a target of every type. You can literally snipe off one of everything. And often this is usually a three for one. Uh, I've never actually hit the five for one, but it can be if you're in a game with enough variety. The, the mana cost is a little bit of a pain, but the fact is you're going to have targets. Gaze of Granite. So speaking of Pernicious Deed... Here essentially is a pernicious deed. You can set the scale and go from there. It doesn't already have to be in play. Uh, if you need to sweep away Niv Mizzet, you can. Uh, you know, uh, usually it's for less than five. Leyline Prowler. Now this is going to be interesting. This is a flexible card, yet it doesn't actually do anything really well. Being a Death Touch Life Linker, uh, so it can like get you two back and kill a guy. Okay. The big thing here is that in this color you have a piece of ramp. And you'll be seeing that this deck is a little mana hungry. Treasure find. So two mana to bring back a card from your graveyard to your hand and exile treasure find. Not the greatest, but when you start seeing there are always going to be cards you want to bring back. Usually they're sweepers. So a two mana card to do so, that's just mana efficiency. Going into black red. I put this one up front. I run all five border posts. So they're multicolor. They're either mana fixing, if you use the bounce the land back to your hand, and, and I do run off basics, or they're very slow ramps. So you can pay three, it comes into play tapped. So it's almost never dead, and if you get it in your 10-card reveal, you have a chance to get more mana rocks. I, I have seen some builds do this. I don't see enough builds, in my opinion, run enough mana rocks. Now, most of your mana rocks in this deck are going to be three mana. So this is a slower-ish deck, but it is a ton of fun. So, Rakdos' Return. The original Weissman deck uh, ran Mind Warp, or is it Mind, yeah, Mind Warp, Mind Twist. I can't, no, it was Mind Twist. Anyway, the short version is, you aim this at someone, you're going to deal X to that player, and they're going to discard X cards. This is obviously more of a one-on-one, -on -one, or if you see someone who's a problem at the table, you know, take out three cards from their hand, usually have them dump their hand, it's usually going to do some damage. This over, you know, any other sort of discard card, I really like that. Now, this one, uh, depending on your preference, the big part here, it's an instant. You basically pay life according to the amount you want to, the amount of damage you want to deal and divide it amongst creatures. That's cool. Now, it is dealing damage and it is paying life, so those aren't always the greatest things ever. But the fact that it's a three mana instant, it usually means that if you have three mana open, that's what this deck is almost notorious for, is end of turn, three mana in about five different colors that it can do. They don't know what you're going to do. There we go. Malfagor. Now, you keep reloading your hand, so that's not a big deal. Uh, you pitch three, four, or if, you're, if your hand's even overflowing, like if you somehow hit this point where you end up above seven cards and you pitch your whole hand, this guy can clear the board, leaving you with the sole position. Pretty good. Notice he is a dragon. That's going to come up uh, down the road. We'll come back to that. So, Angress Rampage. Uh, one, the fact it's a sorcery, that stinks a little bit. But the big part here is you can have someone sacrifice a Planeswalker. More often than not, that's what the main target here is. Because usually they'll have multiple either artifact or creatures. Maybe you'll get someone's mana rock early. The big part here is if they only have one Planeswalker that you just can't kill because you have to go kill another one or do whatever, this is going to get a Planeswalker, and for the price, this is cheap. Otherwise, you know, maybe Bedevil or something like that. Grave Upheaval. This is a card that I love for literally every aspect of it. Uh, the fact that it can get a creature card onto the battlefield, it gains haste. Uh, it has basic land cycling six. It doesn't feel great for the ability, but at the same time, it's that flexibility. There are many times I'll cycle it and then bring it back uh, through other means. So that's black red. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can. White green, reborn hope, return target multicolored card from your graveyard to your hand. And this doesn't exile itself. Not that, that really matters. Uh, most, a good chunk of this deck is multicolor. You'll see that. So this gets almost everything you need back. Archon of Valor's Reach. This is sort of a flex slot. It's a muscle slot. Six mana for a five, six flying vigilance trample. Pretty good. And you can shut down if one player is playing a sort of a 
type tribal, whether it's artifact or enchantment based, maybe they're a spell slinger, maybe they're super friends. This deck has no planeswalkers, so you choose planeswalkers, you are not being hurt by this whatsoever. I would heavily recommend not choosing instants, I'll put it that way. Uh, but this, this has the flexibility, it's a 5-6. It does many things, and it does almost all of them well. The fact that it's modal is pretty good. There is more ramp. Same thing I said about the other border posts. Uh, Selesnia Charm. This one does make the cut. The pump and trampled almost doesn't happen. Putting a knight token doesn't happen. The big thing there is two mana to exile five or greater. Uh, how many titans do you see? Worm coil engines, dragons. There are so many targets for two mana. It's just going to hit something. Uh, Knights of Autumn. Almost every time, it's going to be destroy artifact or enchantment. I have it in there because it's a cheap body. Uh, if you need to gain life, if you need a 4-3, uh, more often than not, it's just going to be a creature that blows up an artifact or enchantment. So, you know, could be harmonic sliver, but that one costs a bit more. Uh, recent edition, Faber Elder. Uh, simply put, it can make up to five mana. That's pretty good. It's more ramp. It's a body. It, it just, it does what we need to do. And more ramp, especially more than two, is pretty good. Uh, another muscle slot. So you see white green is kind of my muscle backup slot. Trample, big body, gate has lifelink. This guy, if it hits, uh, if it comes back after they try to kill it, 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 it can't just die straight to damage. That's pretty cool. So, I mean, the price tag is, is a little high, but you've grave upheaval, and this deck's meant to play long. Moving on, white, black. Angel Spare, six mana comes in play, blows something up. Cool. Ashen Rider, seven mana comes in play, exiles a permanent. Okay, moving on. Magister Worth. This one is, uh, you have to be aware of the fact that it does come down to votes. More times than not, people will vote to blow up all the creatures. That's, you know, return each creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. You know when this thing's going to trigger and that's going to happen. Very few times is that going to get enough votes. And the fact that the tiebreaker is to blow up everyone but the Magister Worth, this pretty much usually is a uh, wrath on a body. It's it very almost dependable because the table usually wants to see stuff cleared out. D Spark, almost same thing said about the uh, Selesnia Charm, except this hits any permanent. You're looking at artifacts that aren't creatures, or you're looking at planeswalkers, and it exiles. Perfectly serviceable, two mana, great. Kaya's Wrath, this one's weak in the essence that it is very mana intensive. However, destroying all creatures, okay, you'll you will not gain a ton of life on this. You, but the main part is it's a wrath in a color that doesn't you know contribute a lot of cards otherwise. This is a beater body. Big thing is, it has lifeling as protection from two colors. Pretty good. Getting over 30 life. I mean, you, you, we start with 40 in a multiplayer game. That's good. Uh, this, many times, this thing just will not, you know, quit. So, it'll keep getting in. It'll keep getting points. I'm usually very aggressive. I'm not holding this guy back to threaten a block. I'm usually getting in, getting four life back from a player very often. Uh, it does its job. It's hard to kill. Pretty good. Black, blue. I actually, surprisingly, have very few of these cards in the deck. I've slimmed down a lot of them because they seem bloated on the casting cost. So we are looking at instant. Uh, main, it has two main jobs. Main one, it can counter a sorcery spell outright. That's it. Stopping wrath, stopping combo pieces. Heck, stop someone's color fixing. Those are things. Destroying a creature of power, two or less, very seldom. I mean, it would have to be, again, it'll, it'll kill Lab Man. You know, killing Lab Maniac, considering it's a win con, pretty important. And then the uh, look at the top three cards of target player's library, usually yourself, put one back and the rest in the, in the player's graveyard. Or if someone decides they're going to tutor, uh, follow up with their tutor, nail whatever they tutored for. Uh, sorry, you know, the vampiric cycle, vampiric cycle um, worldly tutor, those sorts of things. Tyrant Scorn. This, is, this looks like a weak card. Uh, it does some stuff. Killing uh, utility bodies. Uh, there are plenty. Uh, if you've ever played against Edric, for example... Most of those bodies are that casting cost, killing Edric itself. Some of the faster decks has, has that ability. Uh, returning a creature, it can even be your own Niv-Mizzet Reborn. It has some flexibility. This might become a Drown in the Lock. I'll see. There's Ramp in a color that doesn't usually give Ramp. Evil Twin, uh, it's another clone. I run a bunch of clones. The main thing is you're paying four mana or less to get another Niv-Mizzet. Depending on the body, usually you'll let the clone die. See how that goes. From here, blue white counter non creature spell. I'm there usually to stop combo, to stop wrath effects. You don't want to you don't want to lose Niv Mizzet. Uh, you want to lose it on your terms. Hindering light protects a creature or you draw a card. Pretty good. 
It is a blink effect in multicolor. So it is, so this can be found with Niv Mizzet, um, and you can blink Niv Mizzet at instant speed. So clearly, you do it at the end of the opponent's turn or in response to removal. Get some cards. It's pretty good gas. If you've ever you know if you, when this thing was standard legal, this thing was you know the one of the best cards ever. X life, X cards, pretty good. Uh, usually you don't want to be casting this for less than X equals three. You can be going huge, just keep some mana open to respond. It's a very, it, it is definitely a later game card, but it'll dig you out of some holes. Vanish into Memory, another multicolor blink card, and it has a hole, you then you'll draw. So you would get, you draw like the six cards if you hit your Niv-Mizzet, or, um, and then you have to discard at the, you know, when it comes back in, et cetera, et cetera. But it, 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 you throw it up against Malfagor, you know, those sorts of things. It resets bodies, and these bodies are usually very valuable. One of my favorite new cards is Time Wipe. You bounce Niv Mizzet, you boom the board. Easy enough. And ramp. Again, we're going to see a bunch of ramp because this deck is very color and mana hungry. Red White was very hard to actually get the right balance on. So you have a Pseudo Wrath. You have an X spell. You can aim it at players, aim it at creatures. There's also the caveat that... Um, any creature dealt this way, uh, uh, tap any creature that's dealt damage this way. Players dealt damage this way can't cast non-creature spells. So you have a lot of ways of doing stuff. You can shut down combo players. Like if it looks like, oh, they're going to untap. Like they're if they're doing a bunch of stuff and then they're like, oh, and I'm going to get ready to cast my big sorcery spell. You know, they cast high tide, slam them with this. They can't, with one of their untap spells on the stack, slam them with this. Uh, tap a bunch of creatures, keep them from attacking you, work political deals. It does a lot of stuff for its dollar price, for its mana price. I mean, obviously, you know, what are you going to do? But the big thing here is you can simply pay three to shut one player off to tap one creature. It does stuff. It's very flexible. Two mana usually kills one creature. Not great, but you'll see more often than not when you play one of these decks, you need some pinpoint too. Surprisingly, a pseudo one-sided wheel card. Discard all the cards in your hand, draw that many plus one, so it's actually replacing itself. Card neutrality, something we don't see in red, white, then gain life equal number of cards. Even if you're only getting three life, three new cards, that's awesome. Off of Niv Mizzet, the fact that's an instant, it this card actually fits so well in this deck, it's ridiculous. So that's red, white. Uh red green. You have to have bodies. I, I don't know how else to say it. You have to have bodies. And let me see if I can get the zoom a little bit better. There we go. Dragon's Lair Spider, it's not perfect. However, whenever they cast any whenever your opponent casts any spell, the new the new one that's coming out in Theris Beyond Death only works on instant sorceries. This is multicolor six for a five, six with reach. This one makes insects as opposed to spiders, which is so weird. But putting more bodies on the board and threatening, pretty good. Signal the clans. Uh, you might be wondering why this and not Eldarmer's call. Mostly price. That's really it. Uh, two mana. You go off. You find three cards with different names. Well, since this is a singleton format, and you randomly get one of them. So this deck doesn't run a lot of creatures. This is a sort of impulse. It's not a perfect card. This is very easily cuttable. The big thing here is in those early turns, you don't always have a lot of stuff to do. And the best part about this is. You can, being instant speed, it's simply, you just hold on to it to the end of the, of the opponent right before you, cast it, go off, replace the card with a body. Creature, and basically exploration, I never use this, hey, give him trample, uh, I don't have any, I have like one land worth saving. Playing an additional land, it's just ramp, that's all it simply is, it's just ramp. There's more ramp. So, new card. Um, exile top five cards of your library. You may play cards, so you can play any number of cards exile this way. That means late game, this is going to get you a bunch of stuff. The big thing here is usually you can play an additional land. Uh, I, if you haven't already played a land, exile five, you might get two lands, pop those out. That's pretty good. This is really here mostly for ramp. Uh, if you end up exiling a couple other cards, oh well. This deck does not need any specific card besides Niv Mizzet. Flexibility. So you have the ability to give it plus one, plus one, or haste. When it comes to play, you can either have it fight or you can destroy a land that has a non-mana activated ability. Uh, there's your Maze of Ith. There are all, you know, some of your combo lands. This guy, it's so funny that blinking this to be sort of an Avalanche Riders land destruction package. That is absolutely fun. And the fact that it could be either a 5-6 or a 4-5 with haste. 
um, having it fight. This is surprisingly more flexible than it looks and cheap. Speaking of ramp, blue green is a card is, is a color combination. You could have 20 cards in blue green. It, to, in order to keep this deck more likely to draw four plus cards, I had to keep this slim down. Drawing three, playing an additional land. Yep, pretty good. Drawing one, playing an additional, sorry, drawing one, putting a land into play at instant speed for two mana. Pretty good. You have a clone. If you decide to dump enough mana into it, you can make it bigger than the original Niv Mizzet. It also can't be countered. Uh, so, sort of flexible. Most of the time, I'm just playing it for four to get Niv Mizzet. Let's get this one properly oriented. Both abilities are useful. I want to emphasize that. Stopping, Activator, Triggered, those are Planeswalker Ultimates, Pernicious Deeds, uh, some combo cards, uh, Lab Maniac, for example. And therein lies the fun part. If you pop this off, when someone goes, oh, Lab Maniac, I'm going to win. Ability on the stack, counter the ability. They can't draw, they lose. You actually just, uh, once again, I have more abilities in here to kill Lab Maniac, but the number of decks that seem to say, oh, that's my alternate win condition or my primary, I like stopping that guy. Sorcery Speed, make a token. So three mana Niv Mizzet, Sorcery Speed. Okay, that's fine. Spitting Image, a personal favorite card. Um, if this is outside, you know, this card runs like a buck and some change, maybe two. I just like the fact that, that you can keep paying for pitching those extra lands, making tokens. A very flexible card. Even if Niv, you know, only resolves once in a game, this card can carry, uh, can carry you through if you keep drawing cards. So those are multicolor. Let's look at the artifacts. Renegade map, uh, it's fixing. I, I don't know what I'll say. It's fixing. It's not great, but it's fixing. Sort of ramp. The price on this, I wouldn't, I'd wouldn't. i probably just get another one of the Renegade maps. It's fixing. This is good. It is ramp. It is slow, but four to make two colored mana. You don't, want, you don't need colorless as much as you need mana fixing. The ability to draw an extra card, I know five. Five is a terrifying number. This doesn't come up in many games, but when it does, this turns you into a true control deck where your cards are replacing themselves. People cannot keep up with that. Not when you're the control deck at the table. I love Golos. Um, I don't want to really... I, I mean, he could absolutely run the entire deck, but it, it's not built to be... It, it, basically, Golos is not a lieutenant. He's not, he's not meant to run this deck. He can work, but just be aware, he's mostly in there to fetch a land. Right here, you're gonna you're you're not gonna feel great with that all the time. I'm I'm saying that now. Be at, at least you can play lands, uh, but with the number of counter spells and stuff like that, uh it, it, it basically if you're in a great position, Golos will push you over the edge. He's not the one I'm gonna say that you want to be using. So let's look at some non-basics. Fetch. Fetch. Here is what I brought up about my dragons. So, dragon, dragon. One man of any color to, to play a dragon. Always good, especially when you have a five-color general. And you can sacrifice this to return target dragon card or Ugin Planeswalker. So if you want to throw something in here, throw an Ugin in here. Uh, so, I mean, it, it it's a sort of grave digger. It's a sort of mana fixer. Bringing back Malfagor, or or if I have this in play and bringing back Niv-Mizzet, that's just money in the bank. Right down here is the reason we kind of want that. Uh, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature you control. Another five mana make, you know, um, uh, Niv-Mizzet. And it's worth noting that it has to use colorless. So you have to kind of just be careful at what sources. Like if I have this, I'm probably not going to be sacrificing this because it does make colorless. Feel of Dead makes colorless. Awesome. In a deck that you're going to see the way this thing's built, this fits in because it, it has Golos. It has so many car, uh, cards with different names. I have gotten back into many games after Wraths because of this card. Makes a mana of any color from the opponents. You really don't care what color. Makes a color uh, according to the gates. As you can assume, I'm running 11 gates. So, gaining three life, that's nice. It can make a colorless. That's important, obviously, for um, Mirror Pool. And then it makes a color your gates can your gates use. Here is an alternate win con. You have Maze's End. It makes colorless. I just keep pointing that out. Obviously, it's Maze's End, so it goes off. It fetches gates, puts them in play. You have mana fixing and a win con. Keep it going. Mana of any color. It is gate. So, and then we have the rest of the ones are just the gates. Then I have a stack of basics. Nothing impressive. So, when I say this deck's very flexible, I'm going to show you cards I'm not running, but very easily could be running. 
Alchemist Refuge, giving giving cards flash. The deck likes that. Rakdos Charm, obviously this is a damage copy. You'll notice this deck is actually, the, my exact version I just went through, is actually very weak against Graveyard. I We don't run many Graveyard decks where we play. It's not taboo or anything, just doesn't work. So this, uh, Kaya's Guile, uh, I'm trying to think of any other multicolor big Graveyard haters. So there's a couple of them. But if Graveyard is a problem in your area, I'd run one of those. Uh, also, if there's heavy swarm decks, the damage right there is pretty good. So this is a flexible slot that, you know, can go in and out. Soul Herder, uh, I don't like it because of how slow it is. Now, I do understand it works at the end of turn. That's good. However, if I'm if my deck's already set up and I'm drawing four plus cards a turn, it just means I'm going to be discarding more cards and it's a liability. This is one I was debating on. It is basically a red-green draw spell. And it, now, obviously, I just need to explain that. X cards at random from your graveyard, and it exiles itself. The biggest problem is it's sorcery. Versus everything else red-green can already do, and you saw that. If I was going to replace Signal of Clans, it probably was something like that. But too many X spells, and this deck already ha is very mana-hungry. However, this is very playable if you want it. This looks terrible. Don't get me wrong, it looks terrible. But when you have a red-white spell that deals damage to each creature equal to power, this will keep it alive. I'll see if I can find it real quick while I, while I mention the rest. It also is a bounce save spell on your guy. So, where are you? Uh, here it is, Solar Blaze. If you wanted, Angelic Shield works with this, because it means your Niv-Mizzet will not kill itself. So, it's playable, it's also very cuttable, it can save Niv-Mizzet, it's there. This looks overall better uh, compared to Fire Covenant. The biggest problem is it's Sorcerer Speed. Three per target. That's not the worst. It's really not. So, I mean, like, can it go in? Yes. I also have Malfagor. So if I need to kill a lot, this this will kill you before you kill too many. Malfagor is kind of my flex slot for this. Very playable. Um, if you don't like that... Um, if you don't like a uh, white blue counter spell, this one fills in. It's dirt cheap. The uh, absorb just got reprinted, but absorb uh, for three life versus shutting them down for a turn. You need to shut them down probably more than the life. I was running this up until a couple weeks ago. I love this card. Do not get me wrong. I absolutely love this card. When it says you get to put a permanent casting seven costs or less, every creature in this deck costs seven or less. So you'll flop into some of those cards. That's really awesome. I mean, obviously, it's if it's played at, you know, during your turn. Or just end a turn, shuffle shuffle cards in, and draw seven. Uh, versus, but when I played the deck, my bigger problem was I wanted more answers to spells more than I wanted this. It's basically a fact or fiction. I understand there's there's timing differences. Just bear with me. I'm going to explain why I'm not running it. niv it draws enough cards. You don't need more these dig deep cards if they're costing four. You don't need to be doing that. Doesn't kill enough. I mean, if you're in a very competitive meta, maybe. It costing seven to basically handle all this stuff. It got cut just because it costs too much. This was often more played for discovery because two mads surveil two and draw a card is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. The dispersal part uh, is, pretty, is, is good that it handles multiple players and stuff, but it's not handling the problems you want Black Blue to handle. And that's where you would probably get like drowned in the lock or something like that. Uh, I don't even know why this is here. I really don't. So anyway, that's the deck. I ran through it as quickly as I could. And I still took almost 30 minutes. I just want to emphasize, this is a very customizable deck. Of the decks I own, it's probably in my top five favorites, and it's never going to go away. Because the deck is always changing. It's always looking for a way to uh, flex into different territories. I run it as a control deck, but it's a very flexible control deck. Once you land a 6-6 six, six flyer, you can sit back. If you're not being threatened immediately, you can just sit back and jump in the fights, hit people for six, go to the, go to the next turn because you have so many instants and everything else. This is probably... Alchemist Refuge is probably one of the next big jumps, but this is like four bucks, maybe give take. I don't know. Pr obviously, prices are, you know, prone to change. The deck is something you have to play to really experience the enjoyment of it. It's not just about drawing cards, but what you do with drawing cards. You'll notice I have no one two punch combos. There's no Lab Maniac. Um, there, there's no instant I win. This is played as a fair control deck that 
it's not trying to control the entire board, but it is going to take a few people out just because you have so many wraths. You have so many counter spells. You just need to keep people from that final piece. You need to keep people from getting too far ahead of you. And the, even if you go down to, you know, one card in hand, no cards in hand, if you can resolve this on your turn, you're right back in the game. You have a, you, you have a very respectable, if not a full grip when you're done. So I hope this was informative. Uh, again, I'm not saying this is the best build ever. I am definitely not. It is a very fun build. I, I love this deck to death. I, I've taken a lot of time and energy of all the decks. This is the one I look at every set and I say, is there something in there I want more? And, you know, for me, uh, white, red, I'm always looking to improve. Black, blue, I'm always looking to improve. Blue, green can take over the entire deck. I had to fight to cut it back. It, it's something that if you really get into it, as much love and care as you put into it is as much fun as you're going to get. So this is a budget deck. I like to emphasize that. You'll notice no no expensive fetches, no duels. It's it's running Guild Gates. It's running Maze's End. I have an alternate win con. I can play the absolute grindy control. I can play more aggressive control. It's a nice sliding scale, and that's how Weissman, the deck control, worked in 94-95. And this is the closest I think I've had ever. And to me, that's exciting because I've been trying to make this since probably early 2000s. There just was never a commander that brought it together as well as this deck. So, enjoy! Enjoy!